Somebody say Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Welcome to our uh, Wednesday night uh, Bible study. You know, I think every time we come together, it's a Bible study, but uh, we label that. And bless you guys for being a part of us and spending your uh, evening with us to uh, improve yourself. Because as we improve ourselves, we can always have the potential, even the availability to uh, improve others. So God bless you and thank you for your time today. Uh, Faith Christian Center World Outreach, hey, reaching around the world. Thank you guys for your ears and your eyes and your heart open to the Word of God in these days. Amen. All right. Well, you guys wave at somebody. Take your take your seats as you wave. You know that wave often uh, towards somebody. Bless their name. It's good to see all of you guys here tonight. Amen. Tonight we're going to get in a very interesting subject. It's all about you. <laughs> We're not singing this song either. It's all about you. It's all about you. We're going to be talking about growing yourself tonight. And it's uh, very important for you guys to, uh, those of you that are watching uh, live stream or, you know, you might be viewing later on, is to invest in understanding how powerful it is to make withdrawals from everything that comes in your life, things that are very powerful, uh, very wise, making withdrawals. Most of the time, we're always uh, thinking about or encouraged to do or sometimes even worried about the output of our life, what we're accomplishing. But the greatest part of your life is the root system that has to hold the whole tree of righteousness. And that causes us to have or to, again, pursue in uh, making sure that we have input coming into our lives uh, from the greatest sources that we can for each and every part of the of, a, of life that we may be weak in, even the places that we're strong in, we can still uh, become stronger, but most of the time we should spend time <laughs> developing those other areas that we most of the time don't want to touch. So tonight we're going to talk about growing yourself. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 54 with me. This is where we're going to start for a little bit. And uh, if this is your first time, uh, viewing us on live stream or whatever. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, prayerfully, the Lord God will use your wonderful heart and life to become a part of us at this uh, particular house here, House of Prayer, and even with those all over the world. For we're believing for a dynamic uh, increase and a miraculous Amen. number of people from the Lord God, and who knows where they might come from. And you just might be one of those wonderful people. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 54. You guys there? Amen. All right. The book of Isaiah is a wonderful book. Uh, in verse 2, this is a statement to, to the children of Israel, to us, because God's word is eternal. He says, enlarge the place of your tent, all right, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. He says, spare not. This is a command now. He says, spare not. And lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Is that something that you guys want to do? Yeah. Breaking forth or y'all just want to stay where you are? Okay. All right. Thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Now God is telling us here uh, through uh, his, I would say, instructions or preparation for our futures to to prepare yourself or, or get ready to grow yourself, okay? Grow yourself so that you might inhabit the things that God wants you to have. Because sometimes we're always, again, we're always involved in giving out and giving out and giving out. But every tree that has ever grown, it has to also make withdrawals from the ground that is within in order to grow. If it's going to grow 10 feet, then it has to have enough uh, drawing power from the ground that it's in to reach that height, okay? And so for you and I to reach the heights that we really want to walk in, that we really want to obtain the things of God that God has promised us, and if God gives a promise, it's good. It's just that we, we have so many other things that take up all of our time that we don't have the time to spend to grow this or grow that. We need to learn how to be able to withdraw from everything that's around us. See, you can learn from a clown. You know that? You can, you, can, you can learn from a clown, even if he's got a sad face. 
you can learn from a clown. You can look at that particular action or reaction or whatever he's doing or play or whatever he's doing, and you can learn something about character. You can learn something about experiences. You can learn. You can always make a withdrawal from things. Just make sure you're making the right withdrawals from the right things, all right? Okay? And so we're going to look at this tonight, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 17. Now, the Lord is telling us all right, to grow yourself, stretch yourselves, make room for, for something else to happen. And a lot of times, we always uh, try to make room for us doing something. No, you need to learn how to do this. This is important in life. Most people never spend any time with the Lord to personally uh, make withdrawals. And so because they don't make withdrawals, uh, they can't personally grow themselves. And so they stay in present all the time and not future mode. You should always have a promise awareness attitude that God has promised me this so I have an attitude toward his promises. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Uh, this is me. Yes, that's me. You know, when people are trying to put you in this particular place, you ought to make sure that you know your place so that, guess what, nobody can place you somewhere that you should not be, all right? The board of life, guess what, many squares, but guess what, make sure you're in the right square, okay? All right, we look at Matthew chapter 17, and Jesus starts with this, or, he, or it brings this out to his disciples because it is something that we don't look at a lot. We look at, you know, the achievements and things, but you have to spend just as much time in your root system as you do in your fruit system, okay? That means I have to grow deep and wide. My life has to grow deep and wide so that my fruit, which is above ground, okay, that which people see, they don't see all the stuff that you have to go through behind the scene, but that which is growing me here and those withdrawals that I'm making from every experience in life is making my root system stronger so that my fruit system becomes purer and purer so that when people receive from me, they're receiving the truth of what I've experienced and how God has been faithful to me so that they may also receive the same truth from God as they also learn how to make their root system very deep. You guys with me tonight? Yeah. All right, hunt somebody and say, here we go. Verse 20, chapter 17, Matthew. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, okay, you notice he didn't say because you don't go to church. <laughs> You notice he didn't say because you didn't belong to that organization. First thing he talked to them about is their, their belief system. Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, all right? Now he's comparing our faith to a seed. And what do we do with a seed? We we'll always sow seeds, right? Well, some people keep seeds in the barn because they want an accumulation of seeds. But he's talking about how to make withdrawals, all right? This is what he's saying here. If you have, a, have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Be removed, be removed hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. All right? And then he says, How be it this kind goes out by fasting and prayer. Now, what is he, why is he using the analogy of a mustard seed? Because creativity comes from a seed. All creativity comes from a seed. See? And so the, the, the position that God has on seeds it's very important in your life. Now, the seed itself, again, has to make withdrawals from the ground that it's in. All right? No such thing as throwing the seed out. And you read the, 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 the lesson on the parable of the sower. You throw those seeds out on the top of the ground. Well, everything on the top of the ground has the opportunity to come and take it. All right? Those seeds that grow in particulars, they have a, have a natural tendency to latch on to whatever ground they are in and make withdrawals from that. You've seen it in your sidewalks. You've seen it in your, in your driveways. You've seen it in places around your house that you don't want grass or weeds to grow, and they seem to come right up in those places that you would think that it's impossible. Well, how did they get to the place where you can see them? Well, they have made a withdrawal from the properties that they are in, and those properties that they are in have caused them to become the enlargement that they have possessed at that time when you look at them. And if you leave them alone, they'll keep on growing. Why? Because they have learned to make withdrawals from that ground that they are in. Not just think about how much fruit they're going to produce, but the first necessary thing is to make withdrawals from that ground that they're placed in. I'll give you an analogy, and this is something that I learned from my grandfather many years ago uh, when he used to, you know, plant all the stuff in his, in his fields and stuff, and we had to harvest it, those things. He would take a little watermelon seed, and that little watermelon seed 
could be planted in a, what we'd call at the time a hill. And he put that little watermelon seed in the ground, okay? And a few months later, that little watermelon seed has made such a withdrawal from the ground that it's in that it can now become at least two or 300,000 times its own weight that when it used to be a seed. It grows, it enlarges itself. From one little seed, now it becomes 30 pounds, 40 pounds. I've seen some watermelons 50 and 60 pounds, okay? And, and those things weigh 300,000 times more than they weighed when they weighed that little seed there going in the ground. What is that showing you? That that seed had the power to understand that if I, if I would make the withdrawals, instead of always talking about putting out first, no, my first stand as a seed is to make the withdrawals, okay, from the ground that I'm in. And what ground are you and I in? We're in Christ Jesus. It says in him we live, move, and have our being, all right? So if I live, move, and have my being in Christ Jesus, then guess what? I need to make all the withdrawals or understand the knowledge of what this does so that my life can be expanded so that when I'm giving out fruit, I also have a root system that can sustain anything else. And that root system is always providing for me. You guys with me tonight? All right. Come on, go with me to John chapter 15 real quick. All right. You guys know any rich folk? Who's the first rich person that you know? Should be you. <laughs> the first rich person that you know should be you. Should not be someone else. See, you're looking at somebody else's fruit system and their root system. Again, see, you're not making withdrawals to the point that you can validate your own worthiness. See, because the first thing you think about is somebody else or this person or that person. And the first rich person that you always need to think about is you. If you're not thinking about you first, then guess what? You have not spent enough time so that you can learn the systems of God so that you can validate your worthiness before the Lord God, see? Because you are somebody special to him, all right? In John chapter 15, I get a better amen than that at home from Rudy. Can I get a, <laughs> can I get a better amen than that, all right? If I talk to Rudy long enough, he'll start barking at me and it's going like, I don't, I don't fully understand you, but I know you're saying something worthy. All right? In John chapter 15, now, rich people who we call sometimes successful people, write this down because these are some things that you're going to need to, to study and put this on your refrigerator, okay? Rich people, we call them sometimes successful people. If you'll notice, they're always bigger than their problems. They're always bigger than their problems, okay? Poor people, which we would classify as unsuccessful people, are always smaller than their problems. They're the ones who look at problems and say, oh man, how are we gonna get this done? Oh man, I tell you, I wish we had some help for this. Oh, this and that. You can tell the mentalities of the two different types of people. See, rich people are gonna always look at their problems and go, guess what, they know that they're bigger than their problem. See, it's not that the, the richness in the amounts of resources that they have, it's the richness in the mindset that they have because they have made withdrawals from everything that's around them that's causing their minds to be bigger than any problem. See, whereas poor people, who are they going to make withdrawals from? Other poor people. <laughs> They're going to make withdrawals from other poor people. You ever bought something and somebody asked you, how much that sets you back? <laughs> How much did that set you back? Boy, I bet you that's going I bet you that's going to cost something. That's because guess what? Poor people, poor minds because they make withdrawals from poor things. Poor dirt, poor ground. They have small seeds. So guess what? They're not expecting to expand anything from from that type of atmosphere because guess what? That type of ground does not have enough in it to produce anything. So all they do is stay present tense. They're never futuristic. They're always present tense. All right? You guys hear? He says this in John chapter 15. Y'all must be, we're going to turn the air up on you guys. Seems like y'all still hot. Huh? Get y'all called. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, what is he talking about? Output. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, what is that? That's input. <laughs> See, I have to get something from the, the ground 
to produce fruit, to give fruit out. See? So, so this is what he's talking about, these differences here. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. All right? So that means that they, they didn't spend the time to make any withdrawals from the ground that they were in. Okay? Because the fruit comes from the sap in the tree and the tree from the roots that it's dug deep. And Jesus is talking about himself as being divine. So if you and him and you ain't doing something, you know something wrong. You ain't making no withdrawals. All right? Maybe I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it like we'd say it in the country. You ain't doing it right. All right? All right? I'm going to get down and dirty with you guys. All right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. That means that there was no time spent for input. Nobody, that person, they didn't, you know, it's like I'm just here and I'm not going to make any, anything happen. He says, he taketh away in every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it might bring forth more fruit. In other words, you got to keep on even if you've gotten to, you know, say, say you're a person and you're building yourself and you're growing yourself and this is what this is about. And you grow yourself to level 10. Okay? So give me three people stand up real quick. One, two, three. All right. So, okay, we got three. So, okay. So, okay, we got three. We got four. So anybody else want to get in on this? <laughs> All right. So you've grown yourself to level, to level 10. Okay? And say on the scale of 1 to 50, you've grown yourself to level 10. Okay? So you have pursued input. So what happens, okay, when a level 5 problem shows up? What happens when a level five problem shows up? You've grown to be a level 10. Yeah, talk to me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> talk to me. That's right. You solved that problem. That problem doesn't, don't, in, in, some re, in some areas, it may not even get much of your attention because you've grown to a level 10 you know, in your problem-solving attitude, you're growing, you're expanding. And so when this little thing show up, guess what you do? You might look at it and go boo and blow it away and whatever because you have, have achieved the ability now to be able to sustain things that are coming against you. Y'all sit down, come on. Y'all with me tonight? So he's saying this. He says, Daddy is going to fix it so that you bear more fruit. All right? He says, now you're clean through the words which I've spoken to you. He says, abide in me and I in you. And then he makes it very clear about making the withdrawal from himself. He says, abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. So if I'm abiding in the Lord as we make these scriptures known and we speak these things out, in him we live, move, and live, move, and have our being. So if I'm abiding in him, I should be making some withdrawals from him. Amen. See, not just always talking about, you know, we got a lot of Christian lingo. We talk a lot of good things, but guess what? When it comes down to the work part, we get real lazy because we don't want to look on ourselves. See, the seed in the ground works on itself because it wants to become more. It wants to expand. So it, it says, I'm going to share everything off of me that's causing me not to become what I can become. And I'm going to make the withdrawals from the ground that I'm in so, so that I can become that which I really, really want to be. Now, one little watermelon seed looks at itself and it says, I can be much more. So what is it doing? It is saying that it is validating through its own words that guess what? I'm worthy of being better. We got a lot of Christian people don't do that. They won't dare say, oh, the Lord's blessing me. Oh, no, I don't want the Lord to bless me. They will dare say, oh, God's going to give me a hundredfold. Oh, don't say that. You know, what's going on? In their bloodline, they still have not enough. See, you can get that from your bloodline. No matter what's going on around you, I, 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 just, I just know that's impossible for me. Oh, I just know I can't. No, I can't do that. That's impossible. You got that in your bloodline. See, it didn't come from Christ Jesus. It's in your old bloodline. See, and you're holding on to that old bloodline through memory. I, I, I just kept. Oh no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare ask God for that. You got not enough in your bloodline. See, and you have to get that out so that you will understand. You have to validate yourself who you are in Christ. 
If you don't, the world is going to tell you that you're somebody else. That's what they're doing with a lot of people today. They're telling them, oh, you this or you that, whatever. No, 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 no. Your validation comes out of the word of God. This is who I am. You read the book of Ephesians sometimes, it'll tell you a lot about who you are. And you need to read it often so that you'll know that when you meet somebody and they're trying to tell you, oh, you this or you that, oh, no, I, I don't do that. No, no, you say you're missing out on something good because God is good, you know, and you're missing out on the best thing that could ever happen in your life. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. As he said in verse 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Or in other words, all of my extractions and the power of withdrawal comes out of my daddy. And all I need you to do is make the same pursuit of withdrawal out of me. And guess what? You're going to be like me. You're not going to be me, but you're going to be like me. You're going to be producing fruit all the time. This is all we're talking about. You growing yourself. Instead of waiting for everything to happen in your life, then you want a miracle. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith, not by miracles. The just shall live by I got three people that said that. I got two people who probably believe in one, one holding on the coattail of another one. I, the just shall live by faith. See, then you validate yourself. I know who I am. The just shall live by faith. I live by faith. Well, what's faith? The will of God. Where's the will of God known? In the word. Once you follow that which is written, he'll start talking to you that which you can hear. All right? The will of God. This is faith. This is where my faith starts. For the will of God is known. He says this. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered, and the men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto, what's your name? You need to write your name right there in the word. It shall be done unto you. This is your covenant. So here's some things that help you guys. You know, roll out some... Uh, better, I would say, success plans in life. You want, might want to write this down. Y'all ready? All right. The size of the problem is never the issue. It's your world overcomer, right? <laughs> the first thing a warrior has to do is overcome himself. As a warrior, if you don't overcome yourself, you're not going to overcome anybody else, all right? You have to overcome the fear and all that stuff that comes at you. You have to overcome a whole lot of things, the, the things that take your strength and, and the things that come at your weaknesses. As a warrior, you have to overcome a lot of things yourself first with you before you overcome anything else, all right? The size of the problem is not the issue. What matters is the size of you. How big are you? How big are you? We go to 1 Samuel. You've heard it before. There's so many lessons. In fact, again, Scripture lets us know that there are at least 70 revelations in every Scripture. I keep finding them over and over and over. All the time. This one is one that we've read a lot of times. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Growing yourself. In every experience around you, you should have made some form of a withdrawal from it. Everything that has happened in your life, whether perplexity, simplicity, whether a little joy or extreme joy, you should learn something from it. And you should extract something from it because it will make you better and will help you produce more fruit because you're going forward. See? You're not going backward. All right? It says this in 1 Samuel chapter 17. This is about David. The more you read these things, the more you see all of these particular laws of extraction and things. It says this in verse 32. And David said to Saul, he said, let no man's heart fail because of him. Talking about Goliath. 
Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Now, you have to understand, Saul had never met David before. Just like there's some people that haven't met you before. All right? And they're waiting to hear some form of a testimony that you're validating your worthiness to be who you say you are. All right? Oh, I lay hands on the sick. You do what? I lay hands on the sick. I gave somebody uh, a book, this book on the Holy Spirit, and uh, they read it, and they told me, they said, I, I've gotten to the last couple, couple of chapters. It, it's kind of it's strong. I said, well, see, they come out of a Southern Baptist church. See, Southern Baptists don't teach you about getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. They teach you about getting baptized in water, but they don't teach you about getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, see? And so you're, you have to know when you're saying things or when you're speaking to people who you really are, okay? Because they'll try to make you not be who you are because they don't know you. They only know themselves, and they only know that if they were in that circumstance, what they would do. They wouldn't know what you would do, all right? It says this. Saul said to David, listen. And David said, I'm going to go and fight with him. Saul said, no, you can't. Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine and fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. So Saul is, is saying things that you're going to hear people say against who you believe that you are. You stand up and tell somebody, oh, I'm a child of the king. They're going to say, what king? You know? And you need to let them know what king? Jesus. The king of kings, all right? You need to let them know that, you know, because there are a lot, of, a lot of stuff that's going on. David said to Saul, now check this out. This is tight. Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after him and smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I caught him by the beard, and I, and I smote him and slew him. And thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. And David said, More with the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the bear. He said, He'll deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. He got, when, he, when he testified his worth of being able to do what he said he's going to do, it caused Saul to get excited. Saul said, Go! The Lord be with you. What's going on here? David was bigger than the problem. See, his experiences he had withdrawn from killing the lion and the bear had caused him to know and to grow. He had grew himself to the point that Goliath was a small problem. And he was wondering why all these other guys hadn't, hadn't gone out there before he got there, you know? And he's going like, what shall be done then? Well, oh, you can get the, the king's daughter and no taxes. That, that was enough right there, the taxes. You know, he keep his daughter. Just give me the tax relief. <laughs> but I'm saying, see, you, you have to become bigger. You grow yourself to become bigger so that whatever things come and persist or come after you in life, your family members or whatever, you're always bigger than that thing. See, and you know that you can handle it. It may be a surprise. It may be something new. It may be something that you never thought would happen in your life, but that doesn't matter. It's not the problem. Again, that's the problem. It's how big are you, see? And if Christ lives in you, big the hope of glory, then guess what? You got more than enough in you to take care of any problem, all right? I got four amens in here tonight. Can I get the rest of them out there, please? All right. Thank you, guys, all right? And so David went out, and we know the, we know the, the story. David went out, man, and, and uh, took his head off so that that problem would never be a problem anymore. And I've told you guys, and I've shared it with you guys in, in the past, if you're going to go and challenge something, make sure that you fix it that you don't have to challenge that anymore. If you've got a nicotine problem, take care of it. Deal with it. Get rid of it so that you don't have to deal with it anymore. You know, you guys, some of you guys may know Keith Wallace. He used to be here years ago. And Keith kept coming to me, and I was actually getting tired of Keith coming to me, asking me to pray for him, you know? And he kept coming, always up in the line on Sundays. And sometimes I think he was just coming up there just so he can come up in front of people so people could see that Keith was in church, you know? And I look at him, I go like, I go like, man, you keep coming up here. I keep praying for you and whatever and you. And you know, and that, that, that particular day, the Lord told me, said, tell him to stick his tongue out. I said, stick his tongue out? Well, we going off the edge now, but we over the cliff. <laughs> stick his tongue out. And he stuck his tongue out and the Holy Spirit told me, he said, slap him on his tongue. And I slapped him on his tongue with my hand like that, boy. And how many years has that been? 
It's been 20 some years. He has not smoked a cigarette since that day. See, I'm just telling you guys. See, see, it's, you have to be bigger than the problem that you face. Other than that, the problem is going to wear you out because in Daniel, scriptures say that the enemy in these last days are going to try to wear out the saints. And how does he wear you out? By bringing you things that challenge you to make you think that you are smaller than the problem. See? And so you got to spend all your time and energy on trying to fix something, trying to do something with this, instead of using your authority in the name of Jesus and decreeing a thing and letting that thing know when you speak that guess what? I'm bigger than you. See? Are you guys with me in here tonight? Yeah. All right. So... Here's another thing that you might want to write down because, uh, you know, pain time will make you focus on your size. <laughs> Woo. If you have a big problem in your life, if you have a big problem, okay, I'll give you time to shorthand it, whatever you got to do, all right? All that means is that you being a small person, Say what? If you have a big problem in your life, it simply means that you are being a small person. We just looked at David. Goliath was a big problem to all those other soldiers because they were small. But they were not a problem. He was not a problem for David because David was bigger. All right? So if you've got a problem and you've got something that's persisting against you all the time, that it simply means that guess what? You, you're going to have to become a bigger person. That's all it means. All right? We go to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Nothing new, just more light. Numbers chapter 13. You guys there? Amen. Pray you guys are following us online because it's absolutely necessary to have understanding so that you might use what you have to use. You and I have the word of God. Even ministering angels are sitting around waiting for us. Some of your angels have gotten fat because you don't Send them on certain tasks to work, to put up walls to defend, you know, put up walls to defend your kids from, from things that are going on in the world or other kids in the world that are gangs and whatever. Set up, set, give them an assignment. Some, most people, your angels who are given to you as, as ministers because you are heirs of soteria, they're given, they're given to you to help you so that you might not have to deal with certain strengths that might come through open doors that you don't know are open. Or, or streets that might be paved into your family's life by other people that you're associated with, you know, and they can set up, you know, God and all kinds of things against you to help you. But your angels are sitting around getting fat. Some of them have to go to the gym to work out because, because, <laughs> because you haven't assigned your angels the opportunity to work for you that they are assigned to you for, okay, to help you in life, all right? It says here in Numbers chapter 13, beginning in verse 25, uh, Moses has sent out these particular spies into the country, and these should be the, the men that have uh, mindsets that know that God is for them. They just came out of, out of uh, 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 off, I would say, off a battlefield that they didn't even have to fight in. And God, God whipped every, every, every deity that Egypt was trying to serve, and his people just stood back and watched, all right? And now they get to this place, and it's time to go in, and God is saying, now, I did all of that over there for you so that you, when you get over here, you could go in there and have what I promised. And so they get right there, and they go in, and they come back with the big old thing of grapes. Can you imagine a bunch of grapes that two men got to carry on a big stick? That's a bunch of grapes, boy. You know, and they come back like that. And it says they came back and they returned after searching the land for 40 days. 
And they went and they came to Moses and Aaron to the whole congregation. That was the first thing that Moses should have never let them do. He should have stopped them right there and said, you talk to me, talk to me only, then I'll talk to this congregation. But he allowed them to talk to the congregation. Oh, no, you don't do that, boy. All right? And it says, I know you, Moses. I got you. And it says that they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and unto the wilderness of Padan, Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. If they'd have just shut their mouths up, everybody would have been happy. Everybody would go, that's what we're going to get. Let's go. They didn't do that. They opened up their mouths. And they told them and said, oh, we came to the land where thou sent us. And it surely does flow with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, one word can back you up, boy. Nevertheless, the people be strong in the land, that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we, we saw the children of Anak there. Well, now, hold on there. You just came out of Egypt. There was no nation greater than Egypt. Egypt had walls, they had cities, they had every kind of thing. There was no city, no country greater than Egypt. They just came out of Egypt. They'd already seen all this stuff. Now they're making a big deal of it. The Amalekites dwell in the land, in the, in the south, in the Hittites, in the Jebusites, in the Amorites, in the Canaanites, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Jealousites, in the Ammonites, in the Gossipites, and all, of, all those ites live there. And Caleb stilled the people and before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But what did they say? Hmm. The men that went up with them said, with him said, we be not able. In other words, we're smaller than they are. It was small. See, our worthiness is based on we're just small people. We can't do that. You know, I'm amazed today. And we've been here since 1998, something like that, 99. I'm amazed and when I talk to people and meet people out. I had a young man at my house one day, and he came by and bought something, fixed something on the car for me. I'm amazed. He said, everybody passed by and they say, well, we thought that was a white church. I go, well, you, even, the, even the white folk, oh, we thought that was a white, folk, a white church. And when they ride in, they don't stop because they know it ain't a white church, per se, from the outside. We're a kingdom church. But they, they look at things. And, they, and I had a young man told me, he says, I lived right there while y'all were building the church. And he says, I never knew it was a black church. He said, if I had known that, I would have came there. I, I started going down to church down south. I'm going, really? You, you, no pursuit. No, no, go find out. No, none of that. No, Holy Spirit, who is that building that church over there? Well, none of that. None of that goes on. See, see, you and I, we have grown up so small, I'm telling you. We still got not enough in our bloodline. Many of us have not enough. They can't do that. Not enough, see? Whereas with faith, I told you guys Sunday, faith makes dreams become memories. That you now, you're saturated with the memory of walking in that thing. I'm living this thing now. I'm living in what I used to dream about. That's what faith does for you, see? And most people, I mean, faith, faith, is, faith is something like a newspaper. They pick it up and read it when they want to, you know? Or don't get it, don't get a subscription to it. We have to live by faith and trust God every day. And these men, they're telling, they went in and these were the leaders. And they went in and they saw what God wanted to give them and they came back with minds that were small, so small, that God said, I'm going to get rid of all of them. Because God couldn't even stand that small mindness that they had. He said, I'm going to get rid of all of them. They went in, look what they, look what they said about themselves. Again now, again. If you have a big problem in your life, it simply means that guess what? You're a small person. I ain't going to get away from that tonight. All right? Because you've got to be a big person to deal with things. See? And the enemy wants to keep you so small 
and everything seems so big, you know, that you don't even, even think about trusting God, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even ask the Lord for that. Why? Because you, you think that's a bigger problem and you're so small that guess what? You could never manage to be able to live like that or to walk into that or to dress like that or to have this kind of life. Well, what's the problem? It's all, it's all coming down to, again, this thing up here we're going to talk about as soon as I finish this one. Listen to this. They brought up an evil report, verse 32, of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land. See, now they, 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 they're saying, they're looking at themselves, and they, they named all these people that live there. They've said, now we can't do this. Now they're looking at other people. And now they're looking at the land. The land, the land. Oh, man, the land. The land through which we have gone to search. It's a land that eateth up the inhabitants. What? The land that eateth up the inhabitants, therefore, and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. Making yourself small. And the more they talked, the smaller they became to the point that it affected all those people. And again, this is why you don't have meetings with a congregation until you have it with your leaders. Are y'all with me? Because you come up here, you know, and I, 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 I read this one time where this preacher had a problem and he got up in front of his congregation that morning and it wasn't anything that anybody out there knew and he started boo-hooing and talking about how bad this was and how bad that was and he affected his whole church. He infected them with worry. He infected them with insecurity. He infected them with everything. I was going like, you the biggest dummy, I'll tell you right now. If I could get over there, I'd slap you myself right in the book. You know, you don't do that. And Moses did that. Because Moses loved the people. See, he loved the people. And he did that. He allowed them to come back and tell everybody. And he should have just met with him and Aaron and these guys and said, okay, we're going to fix this right now. I'm going to send somebody else. Because you're not the one. See, I don't need you. You're not the one. See, I've did this before. I've seen people lose stuff. Let me tell you something. That property that you guys see out there where that, where those, um, where that store shed is, all of that property should have been ours years ago. All of it. Sent the wrong people. See, all of it that's out there. Wrong people were talking for us. You know, and you think that people have the same attitude and think that you have about something, and they don't. See? And the enemy knows that attitude, and he knows that, that, uh, that particular language that they're speaking and how they're going to back down and how they see themselves. And guess what? And you got these people speaking for you. And every day I pass by, and I go like, wow, Lord, I sent people to get this. And somebody else that had a bigger mind got it. See, see, you, see all this is very real for you. And if you don't grow yourself like this, you're going to miss out on all the opportunities that come to you every day. They come to you in forms of people coming up to you and you've never met before, and you won't even speak to them. You won't even open up a conversation with them. And that person could be the person that could open up a brand new world to you. But you pass by because you won't open your mouth. Well, I don't know them. I don't want to talk. Well, you know, the day we're living in, you don't know how people are. I know who I am. <laughs> and if I talk to them long enough, they're going to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> I know how I am. Again, this is what we're talking about. Am I saying that there are dangers out there? I'm not saying there are not dangers out there, but again, we have to go back. You have angels. You got the word of God. You got the Lord Jesus Christ on your side, and you're afraid to talk to somebody or speak to somebody, not realizing that that could be the next door to a new world to you. Somebody could walk up and pay all your bills off for you. And guess what? You're going like, I don't want to say nothing because, you know, I don't know them. Well, they're not this color or that color. Please. You got to get past all of that. You got to be bigger than all that because you're kingdom people. Somebody say, I'm a kingdom person. You're a kingdom person, see, as a kingdom person. And it says this, listen, this is this, 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 the catch-22 on all of this. We saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in thou sight. They didn't even see you because you were spying. If they had seen you, there would have been a fight. <laughs> they didn't see you. They weren't paying you no mind. But again, 
if I have the mind that I'm a bigger than the problem, then guess what? When I saw the giant, I would have said, wow, I'm going to live in his house. Can you imagine the rooms, the size of the rooms that he's got? The garden that he's grown to take care of himself that I'm going to eat from. <laughs> I, I'd, have been, I'd have been going like, no, 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 no. I, I want that house over there. That one I saw walking, I want his house. You know, the one in the cul-de-sac that takes up the whole cul-de-sac, I want his house. You know, see, instead of saying, I'm so, no, we can't do this, you can. You got Jesus living in you. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You got Jesus, you got Jesus living in you. You can. You know, I see people fight all kinds of sickness and disease. I'm just going like, why don't you just call the shot and say, we got one round. Instead of allowing him to go five rounds, six rounds, seven rounds, eight rounds, nine rounds, and wear you out. And you call the shot and say, we got one round. Daddy God, I'm going to get up tonight at 12 o'clock. My body going to get up with me. It ain't going to lay in the bed. And I'm going to go through this thing until, guess what? I'm delivered. Instead of just one day, one day, one week, one month, one year, two years, and you're still fighting that same thing. Now again, here we come back to what I just said. If you have a problem in your life, and all it just simply means to you is that you're a small person because you, you're letting that thing beat you up, and you're letting that thing look at you like it's a giant. And then it says this, it says, all the congregation, everybody got affected by this. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept all night long. Instead of crying all night long, they should have been rejoicing all night long. Rejoicing that tomorrow, boy, we going into a land that flows with milk and honey. We going in and we going to take houses that giants have built. There are cities in there that, guess what, we're going to take, guess what, that they have designed and, and, and furnished just for furniture is already there. We don't have to go over to Big Lots or wherever we go. <laughs> we, don't have to go we don't have to go over to a furniture store. It's already there. All we got to do is go in because we are bigger than the problem. Most people don't face things like that because they do not grow themselves. See, these guys, when they went in, they should have taken that experience and they should have grown themselves just like Caleb and Joshua did. And they came back and they said, we can deal with this. Let's go take it right now. See, it's how you extract, how you withdraw from everything that's coming into your life. You, you take from that ground and you go, you can, you can learn something from the silliest man in the world. Any of you guys ever remember Red Skelton? I used to learn a lot of stuff from him. I never wanted to miss his show. You know? And he'd always say at the end, God bless. Y'all remember that? He'd always say that. You know, I'm going like, wow. Somebody in Hollywood always said, God bless. At the end of his show, every show, not one, every show, God bless. You know, as funny as he was, God bless. Clint Cadillhopper, God bless. You know, Freddie the Freeloader, God bless. He was always, I'm just telling you guys, you can take in and withdraw things from everything around, but most people don't do that because they're always saying, what I got to do and work tomorrow. I got to finish this project at work tomorrow. I got to do this at work tomorrow. I got to make sure this is happening here. I got to make sure these songs are done for this day. I got to make sure we got this sermon right. Instead of saying, I got to make sure I sit down before Daddy God and make some time with him, make some withdrawals. Instead of always out, 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 out. You do enough inward, you get to do outward. I can tell you that. You get to live a rich life. And it says, all the children of Israel murmured against Moses, not against Moses against Aaron they want to stone him would God that we had died in the land of Egypt isn't that something you just can't see how small people can make you small I just said it to you guys years ago here if you let somebody build your world they're going to build it smaller than what you want that's why you ought to grow your own world see and then share it with everybody else you know you know, make all the cucumbers you want in your backyard. Don't go to Egypt to get none. You don't have to sin to enjoy life. I'm telling you, all right? Just ask David, okay? So write this down. I'm going to get to this point because we, we're getting in, closing in time here. 
Because the mind focuses on one predominant thing at a time. All right? You're either whining about a problem or you're working out a solution. But you're not doing both at the same time. Your mind. Come on, go with me to 2 Corinthians real quick. Then I'm going to give you the, the fruit of my labor for this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Again, the mind can only focus on one predominant thing at a time. Right? So you're either focusing on the problem or you're focusing on a solution. Now, which one are you spending your time on? You know the answer to that one. <laughs> I don't know. That. If you wake up in the morning and you're whining and crying all day long and got your mind worried about this or that, then guess what? That's where your mind is. But if your mind is on the problem, I mean on the solution, then guess what? And you're spending that much time, God's going to give you an answer. See? Again, I have to be making a withdrawal from the word of God. Lord, you know, what do I need to know about this situation? Talk to me all day long. Don't, don't come to him. and You know, it's, it's good to cry out your problem once if you got a problem. But after that, you should be crying out the solutions that God has given you. And then saying, now, Lord, you said that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Which steps should I take? Do I take this scripture over here? Or do I take that scripture over here? Do I take this one? Or is there one that you want to reveal to me? But your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And I know that I'm a good man. So share your steps with me and then allow him to give you the scriptures that guess what that's going to get you to your to your answer and get you there quickly are y'all with me all right see it's not hard to get through these things it's just that most people spend more time giving out 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 instead of with making some withdrawals from the lord from the word from the ground that you are in christ jesus who is the word of god it says this in second corinthians chapter 10 Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. So you, you got to get away from carnal thinking to, to be a successful person in the kingdom. See, what you were successful in in the world does not mean that you, are, you can be successful in the kingdom because of how you did things in the world. You have to follow suit, get out of your carnal mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through who? God. So they are divine. To the pulling down of strongholds. So I'm looking for answers from the word of God. This is the power, the divine power of God. He's exalted his word above his name. So I'm looking for answers from the word. And he says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So I've got to have some knowledge of God to deal with that thing that's coming against me. So that I may cast it down because it's coming against the knowledge that I know. Okay? And, I, and, I, and because I know this, and if I need to know more, God will reveal more to me, okay? But I first must have some knowledge of the word of God in things so that the Lord God can use what I have to combat what's coming against me so that I can get rid of that thing. He says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So here we go. We're exchanging one thought for another. I'm taking that problem thought and I'm exchanging it for a solution thought, Okay? So I go to the word of God. When it comes down to your healing, your, your resources, or whatever it is, I find out what the word of God says, and I may know two or three scriptures, or I may just know one. And in that one, I may have to ask the Lord God, Lord, is there another one that you want to reveal to me? Is there something deeper in this one? You know, my apostle always say that there are at least 70, you know, definitions down within there, you know, revelations and revealing. So show me one or two or three or something from this one or show me another one or reveal to me or have somebody to speak to me that I, that I recognize as an authority and a person respectful in the word of God because I may not know how to get out of this by myself. Have somebody with some faith to help me to get through this thing, but I am not going to allow this thing to just persist in my life and talk to me all the time and, and have me worried and whatever. It's a problem, and I'm bigger than that problem. I'm a world overcomer. So this is who I am, so let's fix it. You guys with me? <clears throat> so we go to 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to crack him up now. This is going to be the end of it. At least for the night anyway. 
First John chapter 5. You guys getting this? Y'all like little students in college. Got y'all little books. Some of y'all going to get a master's degree tonight. <laughs> Verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Is that you? So you're already positioned for the victory. It's already there. This is what I'm saying. See, you, you're already bigger than any problem that you'll face, okay? It's just a, the idea of dealing with memories that, that you grew up with or that were instilled in you from some experience and whatever. He says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith, okay? Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Is that not you? All right. So write this down. This is going to be a long one. If you become a master at handling problems and overcoming any obstacle, do I need to slow down? <laughs> If you become a master at handling problems and overcoming obstacles, what can stop you from success? Again, if you become a master at handling problems and overcoming any obstacle, any obstacle, what can stop you from Success. The answer is nothing. Nothing. And if nothing can stop you, you become unstoppable. Are y'all with me? If nothing can stop you, you become unstoppable. And if you become unstoppable, Y'all want me to slow down again? <laughs> and if nothing can stop you, you become unstoppable. And if you become unstoppable, what choices do you have in your life? The answer is all choices. Oh, me. I'm going to read this whole thing again, all right, because you guys are good students today. If you become a master at handling problems and overcoming any obstacles, what can stop you from success? The answer is nothing. And if nothing can stop you, you become unstoppable. You with me? And if you become unstoppable, what choices do you have in life? The answer is all choices. All right? If you are unstoppable, <laughs> y'all thought I was finished over there, didn't you? Gotcha, didn't I? If you are unstoppable, anything and everything is available to you. You simply have to choose it, and it's yours. That's freedom. That's what freedom is. That's what Jesus gave us. He said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. In other words, he made you that, guess what? You are unstoppable. That's why you're a world overcomer, because you're unstoppable. You have to see yourself like that. Not small the way the world wants you to be, but the way the Lord God created you to be. Amen. Always remember that. But you better remember who you got it from. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you young people for joining us tonight. That's our Bible study for Wednesday night. Growing yourself. Making withdrawals. From the word of God, it grows us. 
from the experiences in life grows us from the people that you meet living life with grows us why because we want to be bigger than any problems that we could ever face in our future and as long as we're growing we're always a problem solver the more we grow the more problems we can solve and we can help others solve problems in their lives that's what makes it so such a blessing God has blessed us to be a blessing so we pray that you enjoy tonight that you'll study get deeper into it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy the time that we share together well these are many revelations that people need to walk in in these days and to have the light of Jesus Christ shining on every step that they take amen God bless you we'll see you in our next broadcast Join us always, please, for the word of God is good, and God is always faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen.